What is going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Talking Halos. I'm your host today, Jared Timms, and I'm joined alongside my co-host, my partner in crime, Nate Green. Nate, got a lot going through my head right now, so I was barely able to say that. I'm going to be honest there with you. I was debating about how I wanted to uh, start this off, but first, how you doing? I'm doing well. I, I think your brother would have given you a lot of crap if you didn't start off the normal way. So <laughs> Don't even give him any credit. He doesn't listen to this Shout, shout out to Justin, because I know he's listening, so um, shout out to Justin real quick. He doesn't. He definitely doesn't listen, so... With that being said, first off, thank you all for listening to this podcast. With the thank you being said, please stick with us here. This might be a little bit of a tough one. This isn't even, hopefully we're not overreacting. If we're reacting and you're watching us on YouTube, let us know in the comment section down below if you think we are overreacting or if we are in right in our right mind for pulling this kind go. of podcast off. We are in our right mind. So with that being said, the Angels come off a tough series against Houston Astros. I don't want to talk about it. Do you want to talk about it? They're they're not good enough. They're not good enough to compete with Houston. Like that that's all that really needs to be said. I I think I've said this on every single podcast that we've done. They are incapable of playing good baseball. Mentally. For long periods of time. Mentally they can capable. they can play it in spurts. The dog moves. The dog moves. So, with that being said, I don't know what I'm going to do with this guy right now. This guy's he's fine. Rookie of the year. All right. With that being said, do we think that Perry Manassian's on the hot seat? I'm going to get the dog some ice because I know that's what he wants. You answer this, and we'll get back to it. Yeah. Answer. Yeah, I, yeah. I'll listen. I, I'm here. You already you already know my answer, so it's not that big of a deal for you. But yeah, Perry is on the hot seat. Um, I think we saw that uh, Perry got a lot of a lot of leash last year when he was able to fire Joe Madden, and then I truly think that he is the one who brought in Phil Nevin. Like it's a him hire. It wasn't like, oh, uh, Artie's going to leave. Like you have to stick with Phil. It was like I think Perry wanted to see if Phil could do this job. I think that was a him hire. He brought him in. So I, I think this is, this is Perry ship. Like he has put together this team. Uh, if this was an Artie thing, we would have Trey Turner right now. I a hundred percent believe that if Artie Marino was in charge of this team, we would have Trey Turner or we would have Carlos Correa, or we would have one of the big name shortstops because you heard from a, you heard a quote from Artie in the off season saying like, Aren't we just a short stop away? So, yeah, I do think this is Perry's team, and Perry really, really needs to prove that his guys are close. I think he's doing a decent job with uh, with Neto and Joyce. Um, Bachman and Silseth are able to make the bigs, but they haven't really been able to prove that they're going to be able to stay long-term. Obviously, like Bachman and Silseth, they'll be fine, but – you just got to see like that consistency out of those kids and, and to prove like, Hey, I know how to develop. We haven't really done this well, but we're going to get better. So I do think he's on the hot seat though, because the angels, they brought him in to win games. He hasn't won. And then to kind of say like, Oh, already just leave me alone. Let me do it, my thing. And they've let him do his thing. And it really hasn't gotten too much better. So. I disagree with the getting better part. The Angels, it's the same team. I don't think they're the same team. Here's my thought. Record wise, record wise, yes, 100%. They're the same team. Talent wise, they are a lot better than what they are made out to be, to be fair, right? Like you got Mike Trout. Like, granted, this isn't bad. Yeah, I will say they do have more talent than they have had in years past, but he also was the one who brought in Phil. So he gets that part of this. Or even if we're not blaming Phil, I. I'm fine with not blaming Phil. Like, then it's on Perry because Perry's telling Phil what to do. So well, either way, this all comes back to Perry on, you said this team was going to be better. No, I'm not throwing Artie under the bus. I'm not. And you know I'm not a big Artie guy. I'm not. But Artie right now looks like the smartest guy in the room. And that that might be the, the worst quote I've ever had on this show. But Artie right now looks like the smartest guy in the room. If you were to put Phil Nevin, Perry Manassian, and, and all the other guys uh, in the front office in there, Artie sounds like the the guy with reason. Well, I I I, I don't dis I don't disagree because I think the Angels. I would have loved a shortstop. I would love to have 
Zach Neto at second base. And I know people are going to be like, well, there's other people. David Fletcher is not a second baseman right now. Not a major league second baseman. I don't care what he's doing in AAA. He's not a major league second baseman. Brand Jury's not a second baseman. Luis Renifo, we knew we had a question mark there. If you were going to play him there every day, maybe a little bit different, I'd say, if you got him every day at bats. Um, but he hasn't performed very well this year at all. Um, who else are we looking at there? Levon Soto, not an everyday guy at shortstop or at nope. second base. It would have been nice. Gio Urshela. It would have been would have been nice to put a shortstop, a legitimate shortstop, and Zach Neto is a superstar shortstop, right? And Zach Neto has been really freaking good. He's Zach played Neto. really good defense. Yeah, I got no problem with Zach Neto. He's had some better. timely hits, but hasn't been able to put consistent abs together. And there's a way for the Angels to put a winning ball club on the field next season. A thousand percent. There, there is definitely a way. Um, and it, there are some going to be some moves that have to be made. However, let's go back to your Perry thing. That brings in Ben Nevin. That brings in Artie Moreno. If Artie Moreno didn't want to have some type of full control, some type of full control, I said a little bit. If Artie Moreno didn't want to have control of this organization, uh, and, and, and rightfully so, he does. He's the owner of this organization. That's how it works. Very good businessman. We've said it forever. Not a very good baseball person. What is? He's turned this organization into what it is, whether it's good or bad. He's put money on the table. He, he's, he's, you know, he's spent more than what they were. He's done the job that he wanted to do. Obviously, he wanted to win a World Series, but, you know, there's only one of those every year. Yep. So he yep. hasn't been able to do that. He hasn't really been able to put a winning team on the field However, yet either. But Artie, Artie Moreno has only ever brought in people that he can control. Is that fair to say? true. Right. Absolutely. You look at it, Jerry DePoto, yeah. no experience yep. as a GM. Billy Epler, no experience as a GM. By the way, I think Jerry DePoto up in Seattle is doing a fantastic job with what he's, you know, had to work with um and everything like that. Uh I, I think Billy Epler really got kind of screwed over in, in Anaheim. Um, I, I truly do believe that. Um, and I think Perry's gonna end up getting screwed over in Anaheim too. I think that I think all those guys are too smart of base. I think all those guys are too smart of baseball minds to be doing the job that they, that they do. I know that we, I know that you think that this is Perry's team fully and he's, you know, made some moves in the offseason. He has proven that this is very much his team. The fact that he was able to fire Joe Madden in the middle of the season proves to me that it's his team. But, 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 but those guys should not be put in these situations. It's fair. To put it, there should be somebody in charge of, of Perry. Yes. If you wanted to go and win, if you really wanted to go and win, you wanted to ha- pass off full baseball control, you would have brought in somebody who had experience doing it. Not somebody that is their first time on the job that it's like, all right, this is what I can do. This is what I can do. You know, as, as already Moreno, this is what you can do. This is what you can do. This is what you can do. And in a sense, kind of handcuff somebody, which is what he's done since Jerry DePoto, uh, since getting rid of yeah. Bill Stoneman, getting, since getting rid of, you know, I mean, it, it, it kind of is what it is. So to say that this isn't Artie's fault, that's not fair because I oh, it's it's fully Artie's fault. Like Artie's the one making making these calls. But I get also what you're saying. This is this team. This, this is Perry's team right now. Is Perry's fault? 100. percent It's it's Perry Phil's fault. Whoever's fault you want to put it on. I don't think Phil's doing too much management wise. I think we've we can put that. a collective. We can we can if, do the same thing you just did and say, well, it, Perry what, brought in Phil, so well, Phil, it's exactly what well, if. What Perry's Perry's doing to fill what Artie does to Perry in a sense. I mean, is that, yes. is that fair to yeah. say? So yes, I, I do agree. With that being said, let's piss off some more people and ask, not should the Angels be buyers or sellers, but will the Angels be buyers and or sellers come? So up? here here's the thing. They they need to be sellers absolutely need to be sellers because this team is not good enough to win a world series right now. Uh, it doesn't have enough starting pitching, which I think I've been yelling about for, I don't know, six months now. Um, this team isn't fundamentally sound enough to win baseball games in, in October. Uh, they don't hit good enough with runners in scoring position right now to win games in October. Um, they're just not a team that's going to win games in October going up against dudes. And I think we've talked about this a lot. Derek will want to talk about this a little bit more when he gets back next week. They don't hit ace pitching. When you get to the playoffs, all you see is the best dude from every team. Um, They will struggle in the postseason, this team right now. They will be buyers. I believe it. I believe they will be buyers because Perry knows his job is on the line right now. 
It almost reminds me of the Billy Epler last year where it was panic in 2020, having to call up Joe Adele, having to try and trade for some guys and trying to make that team work because the Angels had to win or had to be competitive. I don't think they had to win a World Series. I think they had to be competitive and maybe uh, make the playoffs because of the extra teams and things like that. And I think Artie would have been like, you know what, Ep, like you did enough. You got us to the playoffs. Like now we build from there. But the fact that you don't make the playoffs with the expanded playoffs, Ep, you got to go. And so I think it's going to be a very similar thing. Like Perry, you asked for complete control. I gave it to you. And you put up the same numbers that we've been putting up the last six, seven years, eight years. So I think Perry's going to push to buy. Like, but I think they need to sell if they want to be good for the next five, 10 years. I I agree, and that's kind of what scares me is that I think that you look at Ju- you look at June and minus this series, and you can probably look up who they play. I said that they would win Chicago, twenty. Kansas I'd say City. when they I I'd say they would win twenty games. Looking at that, look, I I know it was a stretch, and especially now they have to go like nineteen and four. I think is what they have to do, which is a possibility. You never know. Um, however. I don't think I don't think that would that's going to happen anymore. They had to at least they had to at least split against Houston. I think knowing what they could possibly do in June, they could rattle off five in a row. You know, eight of nine, eight of ten. You know, something like that. Very much so, and become buyers, which scares me. Which is not the right thing to do this year, um, because of the reasons that you said. I I, I don't think, and because of the reasons why why we've said this entire season. Mentally, they are incapable of playing in October at the moment. They have not shown yep. at the moment. Like, that could totally change. You know, if you go through a month span and all of a sudden they look spectacular, which I don't know how they could, you know, but you go through a month month span, month and a half span, and it's like all of a sudden you're playing fundamentally sound baseball and everything's clicking, which this team's talented enough for that to happen, then sure, you know, you go all in. You say, hey, you have Mike Trout. You have Shohei Otani, who, by the way, is not coming back. Um, you have Anthony Rendon, who hopefully is healthy. You have a health. You have one of the best outfields in baseball. You have, if it's playing dec- well, yes, yes. You have a decently good starting pitching staff that matches up decently well against almost any team in baseball. You have a bullpen None. right now that looks to be decent. You know, like I said, if everything's clicking, and this is obviously in in some yeah. world in July where the Angels have been playing well. Uh, but I, I, I just don't see that happening. And that's what scares me. And the panic button gets pressed and it's the Joe Adele coming up in 2020 and just looking like a high schooler out there and not playing well, which worries the living bejeebers out of me. So let's hypothetically say, and this is the last thing we're going to talk about, let's hypothetically say the angels are sellers, you know, they have a horrible June and that's what makes it for them or breaks it for him actually. And they do have to sell. I'll start this off because I want to be the one that looks really cool. And I want to be the one that gets hate because I know people are going to hate me for it. But there are three trades Everyone that the Angels hates need. me. So why, what? why, why, why would you take that? People, people like you, Nate. I'm going to be honest here with you. Yes, you might be <laughs> negative, but you are right a lot of the time. It's fair to say, you know, you're, you're not, you're not like me here trying to please a lot of the a lot of the fans and, and everything like that saying, yeah, like, I'm oh, not going to say 20 wins months. in the month. Yes. <laughs> yes. And they could, win. I, dude, you, you don't know. Like they could go rattle off 10 in a row all of a sudden and look like the best team in baseball, you know? And we've seen them, we've seen them do it before. The there are three 20 in a row. There are three moves. The angels need to, yes, there are three. They could win 20 in a row. That'd be crazy. Lose uh, 20 in a row. <laughs> oh, they could lose 20 in a row. Yeah. They lost what? 15 in a row last year. Um, there are three moves. The angels have to make. And I know everybody's been waiting on this and let us know if minimum you these three moves. Number one, Gio Urshela needs to be traded. Yep. Number two, Hunter Renfro needs to be traded. And number for the three, right price. For the right. No, they need to be traded. Yes. No. Hunter Renfro needs to be traded for the right price. But you keep bring, going. You want to bring him back though? Will be my question before I say number three? The the only reason why I say Hunter Renfro needs to be traded for the right price, I think Hunter Renfro is going to get somewhere near the uh, the qualifying offer. You could qualify. And so you can qualify him and get a draft pick out of it. And we've kind of been screwed with that lately by giving away draft picks for guys that we don't think are very good. So hopefully maybe we'd get lucky and somebody would pay for a guy who 
um, has a qualifying offer to attached to him. So that is why I say it's got to be the right price. You got to get something close to a first, uh, first rounder for him because that's basically what you'd be getting in return. I know it's a second rounder, but it's an early second rounder and it's money. It's not necessarily the draft pick. It's the money that you would be getting to go get a, maybe, maybe you can go get the best player in the draft because of things like that. So that's why I say it's gotta be for the right price. Well, Nate, the Angels are going to get a comp, a comp B off or comp one round, comp two round pick anyways with Shohei Otani when he walks. However, my number three Unless... trade that the Angels have to make this offseason is Shohei, this, or not no, even this, this offseason, this July, I apologize, this July, this July is Shohei Otani. 100%, you have to make the trade. And it is almost an impossible trade to make from a baseball standpoint, but you have to make that trade. And the reasons why, the reason why it's almost impossible, and I, I hate thinking this way, I really do, because I there is there is a right answer to this, and a lot of people don't like that right answer. And we're gonna not make a certain country very happy because there are a lot of Shohei Otani fans, and we're gonna piss off a lot of Angels fans too. But this is why a trade almost cannot happen. One, you cannot trade him because it's a PR nightmare. It's trading Babe Ruth, Nate. And if you're trading Babe Ruth, that's there is a lot of ramification to what happens there. So if I can let my dog not bark for a few minutes. Number two, you cannot re-sign him because if you spend that much money on him, upwards of unless he's going to take a three hundred million dollar contract, even a four hundred million dollar contract, you cannot re-sign him. Is that fair? That's that you would have already honestly though, like and if you would have already think of Artie's history, if you think of Artie's right. history, Artie gets guys before they hit the yes. free agency. Yeah. Once they hit free agency, he usually loses them. So if he's not signed now, he's probably not signing because Artie that's not the way Artie, Artie does business. Yes. And you cannot – what was my third option? You cannot extend him. You cannot sign him. You cannot trade him because – no. that's what it is. Oh, and you, you can't, can't let him walk. You can't trade him because no trade makes sense. It really doesn't. You can ask for the moon from anybody, but that does not mean you're going to get them. So, Nate, you can take it away before I, you know, my dog is just killing me right now. Yeah, so I agree with you. Gio Rochelle has got to go. Uh, he's been outstanding for us offensively. Um, he, he's been basically the David Fletcher everyone thinks David Fletcher is, which has been great. Um, but you got to get something for him. Uh, he he costs nine and a nine point two nine point four million dollars something something in that range. Um, that that's not helping you with a one year contract. Maybe he wants to come back, but that's one of those things where you have have the conversation with him and his agent before the trade deadline. Say, hey, Gio, you know we'd love to have you back in this off season. Um, we'd love to talk to you, but you're, for you're, us you, to you've be been there good, before. you've been there before though with Alex Cobb. It was like. Oh, like you're going to extend Alex Cobb. You have to extend Alex Cobb. And the Angels didn't go and trade him for anybody. They let him walk and they didn't get anything because they didn't qualifying offer him either. It, and yeah. Couldn't. And we, and we've seen teams do this correctly. Like the Yankees. I mean, how many times do we have to hear about the Yankees and trading a role as Chapman? The Cubs win the world series, but they had to give up Glaber Torres. And then the Yankees go and resign a role as Chapman that off season. So it's happened before. If that's a guy that you want to bring back, that's fine. Uh, just communicate it with the agent and communicate with Gio and be like, hey, we want to do right by you. We want to give you a chance to make the postseason. We want to give you a chance to to play on a, on a uh, World Series roster. But we also want to have you back. So we think that we can be a World Series roster with you next year. Um, but for us, we think it's better for you to move on. We'd like to get a piece for you and, and go from there. So I agree with Gio Rochelle. Like I mentioned with Hunter Renfro, I think he's going to be near the qualifying offer. I think he could easily get that three years, 45 million, which if it's around 19 and a half, 20 mil, the qualifying offer, that's only five mil over. And typically guys will take years over, over the money because they'd rather have years over money. So that would give you a chance to get a first round, uh, you know, second round pick, which gets you money, which could end up being, you know, the best player in the draft, things like that. Um, and then, Shohei Otani. Yes. Shohei Otani. I know everyone, and you mentioned this all the time, you can't trade him, but you have to. Um, the, there's a couple differences between the Babe Ruth thing that, that you always bring up. One, Babe Ruth was not traded for, for anything, you know, like nothing major, right? It was for the rights to play and, you know, cash and some other stuff. 
but it wasn't like they were getting three or four top prospects in a major league ready guy. And yeah, that's going to be tough for a team to want to give up for a stretch run with Shohei Otani, but it's going to give them a chance to win a world series, hopefully. And then it's going to give them the first chance to re-sign Shohei Otani and, and pitch like, Hey, we want you to come back. This is how they're, they're going to get that seven to 10 day window where they're going to get a chance to uh, re-sign Shohei Otani if they would like. So it does make sense for teams to trade for him. Now you now you're sitting at the part where it's like okay, but what can you possibly get for him? And I think you 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 got to get two top prospects minimum and a major league ready guy. That that's minimum. I think you probably should get three of the top five prospects, a major league ready guy, and then you know someone in the like fifteen to twenty range in the prospect range. I, I have been looking. I said the Yankees make a lot of sense. I know a lot of people think the Dodgers make a lot of sense. People are saying, you know, the Angels got to go get pitching and pitching, pitching. And, you know, I think they do need to go get pitching, but there is a lot of pitching in this offseason. I, there's Corbin Burns. There's Aaron Nola. There's Lucas Giolito. There's Jack Flaherty. The list goes on and on and on. Shohei Otani considered a pitcher. You know, all these different pitchers that are going to be available this offseason you might be able to get away with just going and signing Corbin Burns and just, you know, paying for Corbin Burns or paying for, um, you might not even have to pay Giolito that much. He's a, he's a SoCal native. He might want to come back and take a, a little bit of a discount to just come back home. Who knows? There, there's a lot of pitching. I would love one of the five guys or four guys that you get to be a pitcher. And hopefully somebody who profiles as a starter, because I think that's the big thing with the Angels. They get a lot of guys who profile as relievers. But I do think you just got to get athletes. You got to get um, middle, of the, middle of the field guys, shortstop, center field. And I know people are going to be like, oh, what about Zach Neto? Zach Neto's got to play shortstop, yada, yada. I don't care. If I have three center fielders playing the outfield and I have three shortstops playing in the infield, that's great. I can move shortstops and center fielders all over the place. I can put shortstop at second base. I can put shortstop at third base. I can put a center fielder in left field. I can put center, center fielder in right field. Like those guys are athletic enough and talented enough to play all around the diamond. So getting positions like that are always, always important. I think you're missing one guy and I would say two guys, because I think there's still some value. And I know people are going to laugh me out of the building. I think somebody will still have value in Aaron loop. Yes. You're, you're shaking your head. No, I think there's going to be a team that says we have the money to, to take on Aaron loop. We'll give you a player to be named later, cash considerations. And the angels are going to be like, yes, get that freaking contract out of here. I know it's only one year and we have to pay it the rest of the year, but there could be a team like Arizona who doesn't want to give up prospects, but they're like, Hey, you know what? We're actually still in this thing. We have a shot to be the Orioles from last year, but actually make the playoffs because things are shaping up really well for them. But we don't want to give up any of our prospects because our prospects are the thing that are going to get us to that next level to be able to compete with the Dodgers, not just, you know, finish 10 games back, but still make the playoffs. So you might get a team like that who says, hey, we'll give you a player to be named later or cash. If he pitches well for us, we'll give you this double A kid or this single A kid. If he pitches like crap, then, you know, we'll fill your soda machine for the rest of the year. And Angel fans will be like, man, we traded Aaron Loop for soda. That is the greatest trade we've ever made in our entire lives. The other guy that I think you're missing out and, I know he's hurt right now, but when he comes back, he has been one of the best relievers for the Angels. Matt Moore is on the last year's contract. Again, you would love to bring him back. Um, very similar to the Gio Rochella thing, in my opinion. But there's going to be contenders who need relief pitching. Relief pitching is going to get you something. We've seen it already with Tony Watson. Everyone was like, Tony Watson? Like, he's not even that good. And we, we were able to get something out of him, Right. All these pieces that we were able to trade when we actually made trades were able to get us something. So Matt Moore will be able to get us something, maybe maybe not anything huge, but maybe it gets us a, another catcher who's you know 21 years old and he can play in AAA. And I know we have Edgar Caro who's, who's not quite there yet, but it just gives you more depth at the position where I think you need depth at catcher, you need depth on the, um, on the starting pitching front. So... They do need depth in other places and being able to trade a guy like Matt Moore and Gio Rochelle and Hunter Renfro to go get depth in those places are huge. Obviously, 
Shohei Otani is going to be the one that people are going to be upset about. But if he wanted to stay, he would have already signed an extension. The Angels have talked to him. There's no way that they haven't like at least thrown out a number. And obviously, he doesn't want to stay. We haven't done anything to prove that this is uh, this is a place where winning is going to happen. And I know everyone, this is the last thing, and I'll give it back to you, Jared. I know everyone loves to point to the fact that Mike Trout stayed. Mike Trout did stay, but you only had to fool Mike Trout once because you drafted him. So you draft Mike Trout, he feels a little, he he's also seems like a pretty loyal guy where it's like, hey, you drafted me, you took a chance on me. I'm going to give you guys the benefit, benefit of the doubt. You had to fool Shohei Otani once to sign with the Angels. And that was a Billy Epler thing. Billy Epler had been scouting him since he was 14 years old in, in Japan. Billy Epler's gone. So the relationship that he has built with Billy Epler is gone. You have to fool him one more time to just be like, hey, I know we said we were going to win in those six years and you were going to be a part of it. Well, we haven't won, but trust us. We've learned from our mistakes. We're going to do things differently, and we're going to win in the next 10 years when you're a part of this. It's like I, that's going to be a real tough sell for, for him. So that that's why I think you got to get rid of him. You done there, negative Nate? I'm just kidding. No, I agree with you. I agree with you. Like, you, that's that's your big piece. That's the piece that Shohei Otani is the guy who's going to bring back the most talent back to your organization. But a lot of people are probably asking right now if you're selling, you can't compete next year. I don't agree with that. Let's go oh, position. No. Let's go position oh, no. by position real quick. First off, um, let's start. Let's you, let's start at catcher. Just start at catcher because you got Ohapi coming back. You got Ohapi, and you have Edgar Kara playing Stassi. well in Double A. You have Max Stassi coming back. Well, Matt Thice hasn't, hasn't played been, well lately, Matt, but yes, Matt Thice hasn't been bad. Chad Wallach hasn't been bad. You have pieces there. You go to first base. And you can survive next year at first base with Walsh and Drury platooning. You're missing a second baseman. That's something you can work with. Technically, you're missing a second baseman if you if you really if you're really looking for a one. If you're in a pinch and you need David Fletcher, you need Luis Renifo, you need Brandon Brandon Jury to play there. Prefer that not happen, but you got it. But go also, what if you get? But what what if you get one of those shortstops? Like, what if Oswald Peraza is in the deal? Like, let's say the Yankees go. You know what? I'm still, we, need, we need. If I'm getting one of those, if I'm getting a young short, if I'm getting a young shortstop in the deal, Zach Neto's still playing shortstop, and I'll put the other guy at second base just because Zach Neto's. That, but that's that what. Ball. But that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So the second baseman might not really be an issue because exactly. you get a guy like Oswald Peraza. Um, maybe you get a guy like Gavin Lux. You just say, "Hey, Gavin Lux, when you come back from the ACL, you're going to play second. Yep. All these different guys that that are, could be available in this trade. You just put them at second base. You let Neto play shortstop. You can survive with Drury and and yes. uh, Walsh at first, and then behind the dish, you got Stassi and um Hoppy, and Ohapi and Caro. Even yeah, you you have you have guys that have Carol. I think Carol's still about a year away. He's yeah. not. I don't think he's ready until next September, but that's just me. Go to third base. You have Rendon, who hasn't been healthy, but you have Jury that can back him up there and play his natural position at third base realistically. And, you know, you have other guys, too, in the infield that you could possibly use. Levon Soto, could play Jeremiah, there in a pinch. Jeremiah Jackson can play there. Tyron Paris can probably play third base. He can play second base. I know those guys haven't shown a lot. Of, they haven't shown anything at major league level, but – you have guys that can probably fill in and do it. Look in the outfield. You got a guy like Taylor Ward. You got Mickey Moniak. You got Mike Trout, who you don't even have to say anything. He is not regressing. Shut up to all the freaking. I kind of hate that so much when people say that Trout's regressing. Shut up. Um, and then you go to right field. And, WRC plus. Yeah, it, re- he's forty percent better than everyone else. Regression, re- regression. Just I, we're not we're not on that topic right now. We'll get there eventually. Okay. Um, and okay. then you go to uh, you go to right field, and you know you could. Put Joe Adele there. You got a guy like Trey Cabbage who could probably play there. You go. You have the off season. You can go make a trade. You can go get somebody. By the way, Jonathan and India second base would be kind of fun too, uh, from the Reds. Possible. Yeah. Yeah. Possible. What if Dominguez? What if Dominguez is in the trade? That's one of the guys that I would, I would Dominguez say is a must if you're trading him to the Yankees. You get Jason yep. Dominguez. Yep. He's probably ready to play in the major leagues next year. You can throw him in center and move Trout to a corner. Yep. You can move him to a corner right away. Like there's a bunch of different things that you could do depending on what you get for Shohei Otani. Um, if you or Hunter Renfro, you could find a piece there. Um, and you go to the starting pitching too. You're actually losing Otani, but you still have 
you still have a good you chunk only, of your rotation. Well, you go to a five-man right. rotation. So, like, yes, you're losing Otani, but you go to a five-man rotation, which means Sandoval. you're running out Sandoval. Detmers. You're running out Detmers. Anderson. You're running out Canning and Anderson. And and what happens if you take a Griffin Canning or you take a Reed Detmers or you take a Patrick Sandoval? Because maybe you start to talk to Patrick Sandoval and say, hey, look, it's time to uh, maybe give you a five-year, $45 million deal. A good and, and try and that steal him for nine mil a year because he is better than a nine mil pitcher. Yeah. Maybe he says, eh, you know what? I know he doesn't. I, I'm pretty sure he doesn't have Scott Boris. Um, but let's say he's got like a Scott Boris and he goes, no, we want, you know, 20 mil a year. And it's like, you know what? We don't want to pay you 20 mil a year. You're not consistent enough to get 20 mil a year. And you send Patrick Sandoval and you go get a guy like Jonathan India or you go get a guy um, like Anthony Santander or I. Santander is probably not the answer, but maybe it's Cedric Mullins or, you know, whoever it is, there's, there's going to be outfielders available. Um, there's always outfielders available. So that could be something. And then like we mentioned in the, in the uh, off season, there's Lucas Giolito, there's Aaron Nola, there's Jack Flaherty, there's Corbin Burns. Um, Chris Sale would probably be available if you wanted to trade for him. There's just so many pitchers um, available and really quality starting pitchers this year. That could really make the Angels a lot better. I believe Sonny Gray is on it on his contract year as well. So there's a lot of guys that uh, could be available this offseason that have pitched really uh, well. You never know about the Twins, though. That's the big thing there. You never know about the Twins. The Twins are, True. you know, with those Twins fans you got out there. So, um, and then I'm not worried about the bullpen, speaking of the bullpen. So with that being said, let us know if you're listening on YouTube in the comment section down below. If you agree with us, if you disagree with us. Let us know your thoughts on all this and if you like the way it can go. We think the Angels can be winners next year. By the way, that does not include the managerial and possible GM free agency that I'm sure we will be talking quite a bit a lot. Um, John about. Daniels is out there. There there are some guys. There are definitely some guys. John Daniels I'm, is out there. I'm a big Andy Green fan. I'm a big Andy Green fan there. So John Daniels, if you put John Daniels as the GM, I think things are make him the president of baseball operations and then let him get his own GM. If Perry wants to be, if save, he wants Perry to be the GM, for another pod, save it for another podcast. You're good. You're good. We don't need to go off on a rant right now. We set our piece. Right now. We set our piece. So guys, as always, thank you so much for listening to this podcast. Hang in there with angels baseball. There's nobody who's been, been through the ringer like we have um, with the angels. So I promise at some point it will get better. Um, I just don't know when. Hopefully next you year. You can't we'll promise see. that. It doesn't always get better, but it I also mean, doesn't Angels always get can't worse. Be, so. Angels can't be like the Cubs, right, and just lose for 100 straight years or the Red Sox and lose for 96 straight years or whatever it was. So, guys, thank you so much for listening to all this negativity that we give here at Talking Halos. Go ahead, check out the merch. We will be dropping it in the comment section. Actually, not in the comment section. Check it out um, in the section down below. Follow us on all our social medias, on Twitter, YouTube. Instagram, and Facebook. You can follow myself on Twitter, Jared and Score Tim's Nate and Acre 34. Guys, thank you so much for listening. Have a great rest of your day. <laughs>